Hello, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. I am down in the chicken and duck run of my Portland, Oregon permaculture garden. I wasn't really anticipating making a video today, but uh, I was down here harvesting some fruit and I thought I would respond to a question from one of my patrons, which was, what are some really good plants to grow in the chicken run? Now I've talked in the past about chicken and duck proof or resistant plants that I grow, but I thought I would talk about the mutually beneficial relationship between a few of my fruit tree crops and my ducks and chickens. So I've spoken in the past about how I have my chickens and my ducks foraging in the orchard in my backyard. Now I only have a quarter acre, but I have more than 40 fruit trees and nut trees. And that's because I really pack them in here. You can see this medlar behind me and over here I have apples and over there, there is a scrub jay who's not happy that I'm down here. I have these fruit trees packed in really close together and I do a lot of pruning to make them all fit, but I love the diversity that they bring to my diet. They also provide shelter, shade, for my ducks and my chickens. They help protect them from the hot rays of the sun because chickens are a jungle fowl. They do prefer the understory. The chickens and ducks feel safer in the shelter of the trees. They aren't harassed by hawks or things like that. There is a lot more going on here than just the trees providing shade and shelter from predators. There is a lot of mutually beneficial activity happening between my poultry and my fruit trees in my orchard. So let's talk about a couple of those really quickly. So the first benefit that my system experiences is the addition of the nitrogenous manure from the ducks and chickens. The fruit trees love it. They deposit it directly around the root zone of my trees. I don't have to do anything. The second benefit is that um, the trees themselves are a food source for my poultry. Now, I imagine that I'm going to be really diligent and get every piece of fruit in my orchard harvested for human consumption. But again, that is just my imagination. In reality, what happens is a segment of the fruit harvest every year escapes my grasp. I either get busy with real life or there's wind or some of it is bird damaged, what have you, and it falls to the ground or I knock it to the ground if it's split or damaged and it becomes feed for ducks and chickens. It's a great way for me to have the chicken cleanup service come in and eat up that fallen fruit and keep the orchard cleaner and provide a free source of food. I try not to buy poultry feed. I try to uh, produce on site as much of my poultry feed as I possibly can. Um, so that is an additional food source. And the two trees I wanna focus on today are ones that are in peak harvest right at this moment. And they set so much more fruit than our family can eat. And it's also fruit that ripens very, very quickly. And so I miss some of it. Some of it gets over mature, chickens and ducks don't care. They'll gladly eat it and enjoy it. So these are both crops that chickens and ducks enjoy with relish. They will just gobble them up. And so you may have ducks in a duck pond and not have chickens. Um, these are trees you can incorporate into a duck system as well as a chicken system or a mixed flock system. First tree that I want to focus on today is the fig behind me. I have two figs down here. I have Negron and I have Desert King, both great figs. Now I was really neglectful in my pruning of them uh, in the last year. So they're much bigger than I would normally keep them. Let's see if you can see. My fig goes all the way up here and all the way down. I normally try and keep all of the fruit within reach but uh, that didn't happen this year. So normally I keep my figs pruned really small. Desert King can easily get 35 feet if you aren't diligent about pruning. And I got a little bit neglectful. I tend to be a little bit of a haphazard orchardist. Luckily for me, even though my fig has gotten crazy big, the branches are quite flexible. And that means I can just pull them down to where the fruit is. and harvest easily without getting on a ladder. I do wanna be careful that I don't snap them, but if I bend them slowly and easily, I can get them all down to where I can reach. 
So Negron figs are a dark purple fig and they're kind of small as you can see. You can tell when they're ripe because the neck of the fig bends into a J shape. This right here is the abscission layer between the tree and the fig. If you try and harvest the fig when it's under ripe, it will ooze a lot of white latex. When it's ripe, that J neck is very bent and the fig will lift off easily. See, no ooze. So here's the ripe fig. This will be perfect, great for eating today. One of the things I love about Negron figs is they are very split resistant. So the second kind of fig that I grow is Desert King. And as you can see, it is a little bit more prone to splitting on the bottom, which means that the chickens inevitably end up eating more of these. Now you can see these really ripe figs that are hanging here and how the neck is really bent and the figs are really droopy. I'm gonna pick these. I'll show you these are a much larger fig than the Negron fig. And the inside is a very bright pink. When harvesting your figs, you want to lift gently up and separate. Again, if the fig is ripe, the abscission layer will not ooze a bunch of white sap. That's particularly helpful for those of us that are quite sensitive to latex. Any figs that are bruised and damaged or split or bird pecked, I am going to feed to my chickens. So let me show you really quickly. There's the inside of the fig. So the next tree crop that I grow in my chicken run for the benefit not only of my diet and my family's diet but also for my poultry is the mulberry. Mulberries are a fantastic option. Ducks and chickens love, love, love the fruit and they produce over a long period of time. They also drop fruit easily and if you are not on top of the harvest, they will hit the ground where they will stain sidewalks or any structures that they touch. So having them in the chicken run means that the chickens and ducks clean up all of that stainy fruit and get a nutritional benefit from it. Now I've spoken in the past about growing mulberries and how technically the leaves of the mulberry are supposed to be a high protein chicken snack. My chickens don't like them. Apparently you can dry them and grind them up with your other poultry mash to add extra protein to their diet, but I have enough other sources of food that I would prefer to feed my girls things that they really enjoy and not um, kind of zombie apocalypse rations if I don't have to. Here you can get a good look at the unripe fruit, ripening fruit, ripe fruit. So when you look at the mulberry here, the stem runs the entire length of the fruit. So when you eat them, you'll find that stem running lengthwise down the fruit, and that's totally normal. That's how it's supposed to be. Again, it should come off easily. Some folks like to take their tree and put a tarp down and then shake it. You'll also notice that they stain your hands significantly, and that's just the reality of growing and enjoying mulberries. When these get overripe and drop to the ground, the chickens and ducks gobble them up. So thank you for watching. I hope that gives you a little bit of inspiration for uh, plants that you can grow in your orchard where you pasture your ducks and chickens in order to have a mutually beneficial relationship, in order to do what we call in permaculture, stacking functions, where my fruit trees are not only providing me with food, they're also providing my poultry with food, and they're also providing my poultry with shelter at no extra effort on my part. And then my poultry in return are producing eggs out of the berries and fruit that they eat, and they are also producing nitrogen-rich manure to help the trees grow. So my system has a feedback loop in which all of the parts of it are benefiting each other, and we have a stronger, more dynamic, more abundant, more resilient system in the end. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure and give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I also have a Patreon down in the description. Thanks.